very good day. A very good day to everyone. Lunch and learn. Some of us may be drinking coffee or having lunch and such an enjoyable time to spend together as we discuss innovation tools. Wish to say thanks for those of us who are joining us live, you know, on Tuesday last week, uh, today's Thursday, last Tuesday, we had a, a wonderful conversation on innovation culture. And today we're going to have another conversation on tools and great processes. So joining me here today, yet again on innovation and wonderful topics, so this is all about learning and development, right? Joining me is Herman Herbert, known as an innovation consultant, working on many, many different projects. You know, very interesting to set the bar for how innovation should be run. And I totally agree with that. You know, out of crisis, there's such great opportunity and, and we wanna continue remembering that out of crisis, there's opportunity. So this discussion here today with Herman and myself will really involve different tools. We'll show a, a wonderful slide deck. We'll show a, a tool that you could use. And as we move forward, you know, we will present more. So thanks again for joining us. As Please feel free to type whatever question you have into the chat. For those of us who don't know me, I'm Shivani Sinarain. Um, I'll be joined join with Herman in this wonderful conversation, as we said, on innovation. You know, um, we are all about setting up innovation and project management and, and really learning and development, I would say. If I have to say, who am I? I'll say, I'm a learner. I'm a learning and development. I believe that everybody can learn something and evolve. And I know, Herman, you would say the same thing about yourself. You are learning and development. You are a trainer. You are a facilitator. Or we can just say we are teachers. You know, that's how we like to be, to be addressed as, I'm sure. So again, we're going to start this conversation on innovation. Thanks, Herman, and myself, Shivani Sinrai. Great. So Herman, thanks again. You want to start? Yeah, hi, I'm Tom Shivani. Um, I just want to, in case you hear any background noise, you know, I hope that you hear my voice clearly because um, it has some background noise because I'm in a, in a coffee shop. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to be mobile, you know? Nice. <laughs> right, so once you hear my voice, very good. So, um, uh, uh, Shivani, allow me, to, allow me to share my screen now because I was trying to so, pull up my... Um, right, mm-hmm. Right. Uh, right. So one second, let's allow me to get my document on board there. Uh, what's up? I'm trying to get my uh, my document on the screen. Just give me okay. one second. So let me pull it up also in case, let me see who will pull it up faster. You, you get it to pull up there? I'll have to. Um, yeah, if you could get it to pull up on your end. Okay, let me try as well, right? Mm -hmm. 
Great. So innovation tools and processes for businesses in T TNT emerging from COVID-19 pandemic. As right. we said, you know, Herman, innovation is something that I, I, if you don't do it, I think that persons may just be out, right? Um, and why why should not why shouldn't we be innovative? Why shouldn't we come about with these great ideas and and form new things and go do better co-creation? You know, last week we saw it was all about culture too, right? Culture is preventing us from doing that. Now we want to share tools and processes already. So yeah, Uman. Right. So, um, what had happened? Uh, during the pandemic period, as most of us know, many businesses were affected uh, negatively as a result of what happened over the last two and a half years, um, especially those businesses that um, in many ways weren't current, weren't digitized and operated in such a way that they weren't able to maximize on some of the tools that we use, like work at home programs and such. So there were many businesses that have to close down right, as a result of the slow sales, right, and we would have seen this uh, phenomenon across the country, but it would have been in the malls, but it would have been, um, you know, as you, as you go through some of the top, um, you know, major um, centers, like in Port of Spain and San Juan, doing show bonus, the effects of the COVID-19 was um, was magnificent, right, across the country, and it's not just Trinidad and Tobago, it's, um, you know, the entire world and CARICOM. Um, a recent research was done uh, in CARICOM to see the effects of COVID-19. And um, it so happens that, you know, the other countries that, especially those like Barbados and still Lucia that are heavily dependent on tourism, they would have really gotten, you know, the, the hardest hit as a result of the, of the pandemic because, um, you know, because they would have relied on tourism and um, travel basically was at a, at a standstill during that period. They, those countries, would have gotten the, the hardest lash. Trinidad in particular, you know, we, we, we don't really rely on tourism. You know, we have our and gas sector. So even though we were, we were hit hard, it wasn't so bad. Now, many of the businesses in Trinidad um, heavily rely also on a, on a type of retail type business, right? You know, it's a buy and sell um, type of arrangement for many big businesses in Trinidad. So when the talk comes of innovation, you find that um, many businesses don't really um, what to say. They do. It is not very easy for them to um, to acclimatize. Not quite like that to that type of uh, new concept. Because I mean, if you're just buying and selling, why is there need to innovate? Many of them may not be manufacturing the goods that they sell. Many of yes. them um, are not designing the goods that they sell. So there really isn't any impetus to to to, to, to innovate. But when it, when we do the when we as we go through the tools and processes, and we basically look at the landscape. Of businesses in China, you will see a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room for innovation, and especially now, um, recently, um, I don't know if you know Shavani, the um, the director of World Health Organization, he basically had a um, made an announcement fairly recent. I mean, you know that about a month ago, two months ago, he would have made an announcement basically to to, to put an end to the COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. right? Right. Right. Well, not too long after that, he came back and said that he prepared the world for another pandemic. You know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was so, that was, that was like, almost like a came out of a movie. So he, he made the announcement to, to basically put the world at ease that he will no longer have COVID-19. And then like about two to three weeks after, he comes back and say, here, we're going on. We need to prepare for the next pandemic. <laughs> One time. <laughs> so, you know, um, Businesses need, so in other words, while we may be trying to breathe out um, and taking a brush of fresh air, because we no longer have the COVID, you know, as, as, um, in terms of, of, of most in, in, in problems, um, we have to basically operate as though our next COVID-19 is on the horizon and use innovation tools and techniques now to be to put our business forward and to prepare our businesses now for what is to come, right? And that is what this... And that is what this presentation is, is, is all about, right? Um, so it's basically the new normal. This is, you know, this this is a, a term that would, um, would, would, was all over the place, the new normal. And my term is innovate to operate. <laughs> Can you remember mm -hmm. it was um, it used to be vaccinate. It used to be shamanic vaccinate. <laughs> <to operate. laughs> well, well, we come up with a new term now, Shavani. We say right. innovate 
to operate, right? Yes, because, yes. Um, you know, we need to we need to recover, yes, but in order to re in order to really prepare ourselves for all the different um, scenarios that are that are ahead, we have to um, leverage on technology. We have to leverage on um, our human resource, and we have to leverage on the information that is all available. We live in the information age, you know. Information is is readily available. So we have to leverage on all these things you now to make our businesses function better, to make our businesses more digitized. And we discussed the digitization uh, you know, pretty soon. And really we have to um, use innovation now as our main tool to push our businesses forward, right? So this presentation explores innovation tools and processes needed for businesses in Trinidad and Tobago to navigate the post-COVID-19 landscape successfully. Implementing innovative, effective innovation tools and processes can help businesses in TNT adapt to the new normal and emerge stronger from the pandemic, right? So this is what we're talking about today, right? Um, nice. So what are some of the tools that we're we'll discussing here? You all hear me clearly, right? You, you know, you, Very I know good. You know, right? I'm hearing you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Nice. So one of the tools we're looking at, Shivani and friends, is digital transformation, right? What is digital transformation? You know, you keep hearing this kind of talk all the place. And even before we talk about digital transformation, there's some other terms that you hear thrown about that sometimes are used interchangeably. Yeah? You hear about digital, you hear about um, digitization, right? You hear about digitalization, mm -hmm. right? And then you hear about digital innovation. And all of them sound similar, but they mean different things, right? So let's touch on them a little bit. So what is um, what is digitization? Well, digitization is the first step in this whole concept of whether you're talking about digital transformation or digital information. So when you talk about digit digitization, it's simply taking something that is analog. So like for instance, let's say a, 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 a piece of a, a note or a document and you can you transforming that into digital format. So what people do sometimes, they may have a document that you don't have on soft copy. They are taking that same document, you scan it on a, on a, on a printer and you turn it into, into a soft copy. That is a form of digitization, right? So it's really now taking information that is in analog format and converted into a digital format. Now, um, my company, in terms of my consultancy, that is something that we do you know, on the facility management side, right? So that many companies, um, you know, we would have been old buildings, they have whole systems in place. Many of them don't have a CMS and these type of things. And to prepare organizations for um, a digital transformation, so to speak, or to prepare them for different type of software systems, part of that process is to digitize, digitize information. So they may have some floor plans lying around all over the place. You need to take those floor plans, especially if, the, if, the, if they're still fairly current, you're taking those floor plans, you're scanning them and you put it into digital format. So later on, you always pull those documents. They may have records that they never got the opportunity to, um, to put into digital format. You're taking those records, you know, you go into, you know, once they're fairly current or within a certain period of time that they, a company may deem as, as still current, you're taking all those documents and you're putting it into digital. So that is digitization, right? So that's the first step in your transformation process in terms of doing that because um, you, need to, you need to, as you say, you need to leverage on the, of the technology that we have. So for instance, you may have, you may have a whole room, Shivani, full up of a set of documents, right? Taking up space in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a building, right? Creating I'm showing problems, you a document. <laughs> right? And you know, and you know, when you have too much documents these days, that is mm -hmm. also a fire hazard, eh? right? Right. So you have all these documents. Some of, some of these documents may have very sensitive information, right? And they are not digitized. Right? That is an important step because, because in, let us suppose Shivani, you're looking at a company and you're looking for some record that we have stored in this particular room. I'm going to send you now to this, to this room somewhere or another, some other part of the building, or it might even, might even be in the same building that you're, that you're operating. You might have jump in a vehicle and go to some other building to go and look for this document. Go up in a room, go up in some room that have a set of spider and a set of cobweb and thing, look in some box. You know, I mean, we live in 2023. You no longer supposed to be doing things like that. You know, these documents are supposed to be in some kind of format that is easy to, easy to access, right? You press a button, you're going to a file or folder and you get your information. And that is, and that is one of the tools and processes that we're looking at now in terms of making or, or the, the organization function better. So that's digitization. Then you're talking about then, digital. Then you remember, remember to whom on um a lot of organizations, that's what they experienced during, during COVID. They couldn't go into the organizations. I mean, when, when COVID was really, really bad, right, at a point. So, you know, if you had your documents converted into some medium, you, you could have been wherever and, and you get your documents. 
So, uh, you know, that was a, a good example of where people have to learn a lot from that, from something like that. Right. So the next step, Shivani, after digitization is digitalization. Now, it's very easy to get it both mixed up here. Eh? Yes. So I just spoke about digitization. You're talking about now digitalization. Good. Right. So digitalization. My stomach. I might stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so digitalization is the next step. Basically, what we're talking about now. So what we so we we started all by taking all of our analog documents and we converted it into soft copy. So we converted it into PDFs or Word or whatever format we 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 would discuss, right? The next step now is taking your processes, your analog processes, and you digitizing it. So basically, looking for like if you're getting a software program, maybe like a, if, if you're talking about finance, you're talking about like a QuickBooks. Right? If you're talking about projects, you may have had all your projects written now on some paper or some documents. You know, good, you know, transporting those things is the MS Word, good, and other type of programs like that. So, in other words, you're taking a process that used to be analog and you're digitizing it, right? You're making that process, you're putting in that process into a digital format and you're making it, and you're making the software you now work for you. So, the software is now going to bring up reports. The software is not going to do calculations for you. The software is not going to be able to identify certain issues within the process that you probably would not have been able to identify before, or you probably would have taken a longer time to identify. The mm -hmm. software program now is going to now um, develop these processes and make these systems much easier to navigate. And what that does is make your business more efficient. It will, it for, the, for the business owner, you could be in a position or you could save on manpower, right? It makes your, it makes the information easier to access. So you can be anywhere. You no longer have to stay in one location because if you didn't know what an analog system and you're looking at that, you have to be in one location in order to work a system. That's all. When you have a process that is digitalized, it could be anywhere in the world and you could interact with a system. So for example, you're like one, one particular, um, one particular uh, company, um, um, help me, Shavani. What is the name of the, the, the international company that, that sells shoes in Trinidad? Payless. Payless. Right. Mm -hmm. Payless, yeah. You know, Payless, for Payless shoe store operates um, a lot of their um, IT is not in Trinidad, you know. Mm -hmm. So when they have issues with their system, it's, 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 it's USA that they deal with, you know. So everything that happens right. in Trinidad, even though, even though the store is physically located in Trinidad, most of the calculation, most of the processes, most of the payment systems, is done outside of Trinidad. Good. So that is just a, that is just an example of how a business could be run externally using digitization. You understand? So like for instance, so, so just like how you may have local businesses that may want more to leverage on the operations and operating in some areas outside of Trinidad. So you may have like a company, somebody bigger companies, it could be like um let's say SMG, you know, there's a fairly big company that we have. If it is that they want not to do the same thing in the other Caribbean islands, they, they now will, will, will benefit from using digitalization because they can stay right here in and operate all the businesses of the Caribbean, of the, of the island chain. All the processing, all the auditing, all the financing, all the HR, all the major aspects of the business can be run right here in Trinidad and the physical um, and brick and mortar locations are in different um, operations. That is how that is one of the benefits in terms of uh, from an innovation perspective um, for your use digitalization. Um, so the next step now is digital transformation. Now you would have been hearing a lot of digital uh, talk about digital transformation from the government in recent times, because what the government is trying to do, especially as a as a kind of like a, a way to get the country moving forward and in and in tandem with the rest of the world, is to basically digitalize a lot of the processes. Is in, in the public sector. So, you would, I don't know if you, you, you ever heard about Develop TT? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. right. So, right, Develop TT is a platform that they use now um, for anybody in the construction sector, or for most persons in the mm -hmm. construction sector, they use Develop TT to submit documentation, to mm -hmm. submit drawings and for all your approvals and things of that nature. Then you have um, is Develop TT, and, and I think there are some other programs now that have, they have any mix. So for instance, before, when you had to, you have to register a company, right? And you would have to physically go to um, legal, legal affairs department. Now you're staying in the comfort of your home and you're, and you're interacting with the system and you can register companies. You can do all these things without having to physically go to the um, go to the location. Now they're using part of the digital transformation also to, to do um, appointment system for other departments like licensing office and whatnot. So that is digital transformation. So you're taking, you're taking the digitization a little step further. And what you're, what you're doing now is more than just converting one company or one process, they're, they're, they're transforming a country now. You understand? Into a digitalized environment, and that is what digital transformation is. It can work. It can work. It could. It could. The term could be used. 
useful for a company and it could be useful in a macro sense. It could be useful for like what we have been into in other people now. It could be used in that, in that sense as well too, right? And, and, the, and the idea is really now to become more we live in a world where we have to take advantage of the technology in the Shabani. We yes. no longer could, could operate like who was operating before and expect things to run comfortably, right? No, you know, so we, we're supposed to be operating within a scenario where for most of the things that we do on a daily basis, we're supposed to be able to do it in the comfortable homes, right? If you're talking about like you, you want to interact with your, your account. Now, you know what it is, um, you, you, you belong to, I know for, for sure, because I belong to Scotia Bank. Now, when you go to Scotia Bank, it's almost as though they don't want you to come in the bank, you know? You go, yeah, you can do everything online. So yes. sometimes when, when you go to the bank, there's actually a feature to run you from the bank, Shabam. Yeah, yeah right? so sure. You know, there's one to run you from the bank because as far as they're concerned, 80% of their transactions could be done, to be done on a computer. You know, so they are, they are one of the um, organizations that are leveraging heavily, heavily on the digitization to make their, to make their processes um, run smoothly and to basically conduct on, on in-man power. Because normally, when you, so when you go to the bank now, when you used to see about, you know, five, six, seven tellers line off, you only see about one or two tellers, you know? So certainly you could see in, in terms of that aspect, the digitization um, would have been working in their favor, right? And then, um, there's digital innovation, right? So digital innovation is when you take a process that, that before was uh, manual and you innovate on it using digital technology. So a very good example, a very popular one example of that is, is Uber, right? So before, when you wanted to get a taxi to go from point A to point B, what you used to do? Put out your hand, stand up by a corner, <laughs> right? It was a whole white thing you used to do. Anywhere you go, anywhere you will, you want a taxi, you probably have to make a phone call. If you, if you, if you didn't do you nobody know, taxi cab company, you, um, you stand up by a corner and you wait for the taxi to come, right? So where, anywhere you want to go, that used to be the, the general procedure in terms of how you would get transport to move from point A to point B for taxis. Uber transformed that whole scenario, you understand? By using digital technology and me and, and, and then what you call a digital transformation of public transport where you could run your phone up using an app right and pull up and, and get the driver information and get the driver to come at your location and do all the payments everything do it that, that that particular um that particular process is what you call end-to-end -end, meaning to say that there's no need to interact with any with any analog or any other device other than other than that particular app you understand so if you, you start off with the, with the aspect of the, the, the tiny location, the tiny driver, you do your payment, you do everything, you don't even have to talk to the driver. <laughs> you understand? Everything could be done on the app. And that is a that is a, a, an example of um a digital uh innovation. And then you have other other types like uh, Airbnb, right? Shivani, that is the next um that is the next technology. They own no like, assets, they own no assets, and they were able to do so much, Airbnb. Right? So these are some of the things. That, so using digital transformation and digital innovation and this, our knowledge of these things, local businesses could leverage on those things. Think about ways they could take their businesses, use the technology, take analog systems that we had before and make it into that digital system. You understand? So an example, so, an example yeah. are coming to my mind, Herman, right? An example are coming to my mind. You're talking about analog, right? So before COVID, not even be, well, some people may have been doing it before COVID, but how 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 we used to teach? How how you teach a course? You actually go and stand up in front of a classroom and teach live, right? And you have paper and pen and drawing up thing on the blackboard. COVID came and a lot of I mean, look at this, we're using Zoom, but that's just one aspect of it, right? What we are saying, you have now um a, a course creator. So we we are course creators, we could take in a course and we are actually putting it on a site that people could do self-based learning, which is you have your content and now you're translating it, right? So that's definitely, to me, digital innovation, where you have a piece of technology that can do this for us. Someone was telling me, you know, I think it was yesterday, was saying, well, Shivani, you have all these slide decks and stuff to do. And you, you yourself know that at the end of the day now, you don't have to go and, 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 and do X and Y and Z on this PowerPoint presentation. You have, you have AI that could just make it look pretty then, right? So use the tools, right? You will have, if, as teachers, a lot of people will be doing it in a face-to-face -face environment, but there's no need again. You have so much digital innovation to be done. Again, right. there's generic, um, I think there was um, some, uh, what, what it is, gener generation AI, right? Where you can actually know people, and, and, and Google is like that too, yeah? Where you could actually know Right. Well, Herman seems to like business development and innovation. So therefore, I can sell him a particular course on that. 
and and it, so it's it's you don't have to call him up on the phone and say hey um what you want to do you know you like this course you sell it using the technology because you find you find out what they want using using the tool so i mean if we if we don't do it i think we'll be out i i, I think people don't know have a choice you have to do it you have to do it exactly yeah. but 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 what's what happening right now right this is this is just my own personal yeah. observation of a scenario right now the restaurant business in Toronto, it was hit fairly hard as a result of the COVID, right? And uh, even, even now, as we as you know, emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic and so on, restaurants by and large are not um, taking advantage of the technology that is available. Because what would have happened? Why the reason why um, the pandemic would have hit these of these businesses like that hard is because remember movement was restricted, right? And there would have been a lot of restrictions in terms of mask wearing and these other things so that going to a restaurant really wasn't making sense good so even if i wanted to uh, enjoy the food from my favorite restaurant in the pan in pandemic conditions most people really couldn't do no we in this age you know we in this post pandemic period and restaurants basically went back to how things were before the pandemic and we have technology that it could be used in today for example I, if, 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 let's say you set up a particular app. So let's, I'm just using you as an example, yeah? Shivani's restaurant, right? So mm, Shivani, if you have a restaurant- Yeah, that's a good name, that's a good name, right? right? I can I'm cook. using you as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a restaurant, what, you, what, what kind of food do you think you'll be selling? Hmm. Well, it doesn't. Must have coffee. Must have coffee. Coffee and and pay. I I like um things fast, right? Because I want to do about a, about five hundred things, right? So my food will be quick things, quick things. Everything prepared fast, fast but good. But give me one meal. Give me one one one. Give me an idea. A sandwich. A sandwich. Quick sandwiches. Fast food. What's that? Sandwiches. 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 Right. So I want to go to um, hummus. So in... Hummus. Hummus. Right. <laughs> so. So right now you have your restaurant. In order, of, and if you if you were to follow the example of what happened in most restaurants today, I would have to come physically by you to make to do the order, right? Or my, or I could probably have the option to call on your phone. Call right? on my phone. Most yeah. likely, I probably won't have an app set up, right? What I am saying, using the digital transformation, for this, using digitization, right? Or even leveraging on digital innovation, you can set up the Shivani restaurant app, right? And now on my phone, I could go through your menu. I could order your stuff, right? I don't have to physically come out of my house. I could order all these sandwiches and all these other different men um, so that I have on the menu. And then now um, I could, as a, as a regular customer, I could be given certain discounts. You could give, you could give me a particular um, number or particular code. So every time I order, my, 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 my favorite order comes up automatically. So in other words, every time I, I, I interact with the app, because I would have a regular, I, I would be taking certain type of meals or certain type of beverages on a regular basis. That the the, the, the app will pull up that information one time. So I don't I don't have to go through the menu, the, the, uh, the menu every time I am every time I interact with the, with the, with the technology. It, it pulls up, it pulls up my information. I could even I could even order food for other people. You understand? So let's say my wife somewhere else is I she in she imported Spain and I want to send her something. I could not go one app. So you see the the amount of advantages. Have any technology has so that you I could stay home relaxing watching Netflix, go on my app, order the food from Giovanni's restaurant, order food for somebody else. Right? I could even send food in school for my children, <laughs> right? So that's it. let's say the, my, my son come and say, Boy, I'm daddy, I have no food, or this, I tell you, my food, around, I lost my food. Ever. I could order, I could order food from your location, um, Giovanni, send that food, send that meal to some to, 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 to somebody else, all in the comfort of my home. So, how many restaurants you didn't that is doing that right now? Mm -hmm. People starting it up. They 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 coming up. They coming along, and eh? they coming to come. But the point is that they're not leveraging enough for the technology. No, 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 right. No, and that no. is the point that we make it here today. In that there is technology available that people could be leveraging on, people could be taking advantage of, and they're not taking advantage of it. Even though we just came out of a pandemic that taught everybody why it is important to have the technology, because today or tomorrow, our next pandemic hit, we're going back to square one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, we go back to square one because because most of these establishments have not yet set up the system, and you say, and, and you know when you set up these systems, you will have little quotes, you may have little things that you have to test. You know, it, not everything will work out hundred percent. You need some time to run the system to to, to work with all the little all the little bugs and so on. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, all these establishments should be going through the beta testing phase of the of, of the different technologies, right? Making all the mistakes so that next year, let's say twenty. 
2024, 2025, if if an expanded, because my, I'm saying I started off with the presentation. Mm -hmm. not, it's not I said it, is the is the WHO president said that uh, that we need to prepare for an next pandemic. Good. So so don't take it from me, take it from what he said. So when the next pandemic hits, right? These restaurants or these establishments are supposed to already have the technology set up in such a way that everybody are already accustomed interacting with the, with the application. So so when the next um, pandemic hit, you know, everybody would already, I would yeah. exactly, I would, I would already have been, have already have months of practice using the Shivani restaurant app so that when something happens, it's not a problem for me to order now through that system. You don't have to be bored on the place and study my boy, nobody coming to my restaurant because everybody now would have already been, most of your regular customers would have already been accustomed using it, using the technology. That's all? Correct. And that, and that is what we're talking about when we're talking about taking advantage of the tools and processes in the post-pandemic period, right? So other than digitization and these things, we also have this idea of encouraging entrepreneurship and startups, right? Now, how this works out is that most um, established businesses, right, Giovanni? Yes. It is difficult for them to innovate. And the reason for that is because, remember, when you're an established business, right, you already have a business model that you're using to generate income, right? The business model is fixed. They will have fixed processes. You will have fixed ways of doing things. So when people talk about innovation, it is difficult for you to, you know, because you know you have to know you are thinking about changing this, changing that, and and, and 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 due to the kind of bureaucratic system that you are already accustomed to, in terms of how you make money, it is difficult to change, right? So another way that companies could innovate, okay, if it is that it is difficult for you to innovate, why not take capital and invest in a startup that is more likely to innovate? And invest in that startup, know that when that startup, if that startup uh, hits and begins to generate income, know that that, that startup you now be, you know, becomes a next revenue owner for your establishment. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're so talking what, about. So, what you're saying, human, right? Mm -hmm. um, because this is such a relevant topic in a lot of corporate organizations now, as we are saying, that you don't have. You, you, you want to have a system in place. We're looking at a process. We're looking at some way, some kind of tool to generate um, innovation, right? Some kind of new business within it. So you may have, let's say you have, for example, me, um, bottling resources, brick and mortar, right? But I wanted to test the, the use of more technology with training and development. And this is where Caribbean Connect was born, right? Um, which is really like a startup company that will be testing the self-based learning and the new ways of, of, of getting your information to people across. So what, what do you think? Am I an example on when the revenue is hitting? And then the other idea that both of us have, you know, we'll form now um, some other innovative ideas that will start up now as startups, that will start up as startups. And then, you know, you bring revenue. So you, you, you're looking at... Um, starting up some type of innovation, but within your organization to do it, correct? Correct, correct. So, for example, if you look at the ecosystem right now, we have UWE, UWE have a, have, a, have a department called Stacy, that is right. the um, St. Augustine Center for Innovation and, um, and, and Entrepreneurship. What they're doing there is an example of what I'm talking about, but it's just that this is a school. So, UWE, using, using their... Um, facilities and using their um, academia and so on, they have an incubation system so that students who come out of university and have uh, entrepreneurship ideas, they could incubate those ideas and leverage that now so that when those posts, if any of these ideas now become commercialized, um, the university will not benefit from, the, from these commercial entities because they would have been responsible for, for, um, for generating income for these, for these organizations. Yeah. So that um, a partnership or some kind of um, arrangement is formed between the startup and, and, and the university. And you know, the university is now in a position to benefit going forward from any type of um, you know, income and so on that this new startup may, may generate. An example of that also is um is it chocolate is it is it chocolate factory they're calling it now? In yeah, UWE, chocolate factory. Mm -hmm. The chocolate, chocolate factory. So, you know, so you know, they they the using the 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 the, the Trinitario, the popularity the popularity of our Trinitario flavor, and you have this 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 chocolate factory set up in UWE as a type of business incubation uh, model that they're using now to again as a as a as a to encourage entrepreneurship um, entrepreneurship 
and startups also. So that is that that is you know. So so we could see how UBA is kind of taking a step forward, kind of pioneering that. So that same um, thinking could be now used in the private sector. One example of, of who is doing that is um, UTC. Mm -hmm. Right. So UTC has a has a um, has a program. I told you called it they call it Upreneur. Mm -hmm. Upreneur yes. Startup Plus Accelerator. Mm -hmm. So UTC, well, you know UTC is Unit Unitrust uh, Corporation, right? So they will be you. They have this thing set up now where they will assist in the financing of startups, right? And how they will benefit going forward. You know, but they, they take it up. You know, this is a, a cyclical thing. So they help in startups, but then eventually when these organizations become um, you know, begin to make money and become successful, they would now go back to UTC and utilize their services. You understand? So instead of UTC as an organization taking a, an approach where they're just sitting back and waiting for people to be successful, they are now participating in the success of business businesses so that these same businesses now will come back to them and utilize the services and they know by, um, by you know, in a way, will now benefit from the success of the business. So, another, okay, so this is again another way of innovation, where successful companies, bigger companies, right, instead of sitting on their laurels, surely, and waiting for businesses to come to them, they could go out there into the ecosystem, look for entrepreneurs, look for businesses who have ideas, and invest in those ideas, so that yes. these same businesses now, when they now start to participate in the economy and they become successful, everyone benefits. And again, and, and this is not something new. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. Pepsi and Coca Cola is a, a big, is, a, is good international examples of that because you know Pepsi and Coca Cola back in the days we would know that was a, that was a one a one flavor company. You understand? So Coca Cola one flavor, and I said, but I mean because of the success of the of the marketing and so on, Coca Cola even as a one flavor company at the time it became international. But now Coca Cola um, produces. Um, so I've drink up all different varieties, um, many, many, you know, many, many, um, many flavors and many brands we we, we take in. We do himself know it's from Coca Cola, Minute Maid, um, mm -hmm. Octane Dew, right, and a whole bunch of these other and and all these um, companies, Shivani, were startups, you know. Yeah, that all just come under the start umbrella. Mm -hmm. These companies yeah. were startups that Coca Cola invested in, and now this, now these, all these, all these flavors now. Basically, become part of one umbrella where mm -hmm. the major company, the head company, benefits. So I'm saying mm -hmm. a very similar approach could be utilized in our ecosystem. Some some people doing it, but we eventually would like to see more of that being done. Mm -hmm. Understand? Because again, that is that is just another way of innovating and generating um, multiple multiple streams of um, income, right? Mm -hmm. So as you're saying. Large corporations should establish initiatives and funding programs to encourage the emergence of innovation startups, providing mentorship, training, access to capital, and, and to help grow new businesses thrive and contribute to job creation and economic growth. Collaboration between established businesses and startups can foster a culture of innovation and create synergies that drive collective progress. Right? So after we talk about entrepreneurship and startups, we're looking at also now fostering research and development. Which is very, is, very important, the research part, you know. This is something that is sadly lacking in our environment, Yes, very, very. Of, <clears throat> research, especially, <clears throat> especially data-driven research, you know. Using data to drive the research, to drive what it is we do it. <clears throat> so, um, for example, think about TN Tech, Shivan, right? TN Tech is the, is, is, is the monopoly trainer that we need to energy. Um, are they doing any kind of research as it relates to alternative energy resources? Do they do any kind of research on solar power energy when, when, when turbine energy and these type of things? Do we know TN Tech to be spearheading or pioneering any of these type of things? I don't they know, so it means it's probably not here. No, but they have the resources, they have the demand power, yet they are not, they, they, when they should be the ones doing it, they are not doing it. Mm -hmm. And why, why should they be doing it, right? Because remember, just as what we were saying before, where, you, you know, companies now today cannot be, cannot be the type of the long time, the traditional approach, where you sit down on the laurels and you wait for things to come to you. You have to go there, right? So, TN Tech, in my opinion, 
right? From an innovative point of view, should be investing um, training, information, mm -hmm. and all these different mm -hmm. into solar energy. Yeah. Because that is the future, not social money. Mm -hmm. Solar. That is that that is and that is where that is where the future is. At least the energy efficiency and sustainability, right? And uh, we are seeing that companies like that are not taking a step forward in terms of using research and development to generate um, ideas and to generate basically new uh, new business models, right? So as the, as the note said, collaboration between businesses, academia, and research institution can embrace the exchange of knowledge, right? <clears throat> because let me tell you something like, uh, because as it relates to solar, and why I'm saying it's important for mega companies like TM Tech to take the lead, um, solar is something that, is, if you really want to capitalize on it in a big way, much, a lot of research has to go into because every country, based on the geographical, geographical position and their unique weather patterns, Will have different challenges as it relates to capturing solar energy. Good. And so, for example, you may find that let's say you set up solar panels in San Fernando versus setting it up in Arima versus setting up solar panels in Toho, even though we're in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's one small island. When you do the research, you'll find that I just use an example the, the solar panels are set up in Toho not really generating much electricity, but the ones you have in salt generating electricity, and the ones you have in, in Arima, you don't have to leave the job, right? So research has to go into these things to know where are the best places in the country to set up these type of technologies, what you need to do to get the best effect from it, how do you take the energy and convert it into um, AC um, power that everybody could use, right? How, what is the best maintenance program for this type of uh, for the technology? And this goes one and one and one. No major entity is doing research, right? So we need to have these larger companies taking a step forward to do this type of research. So to, 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 to get the knowledge, and as I said, it's a data-driven approach. But we're not just talking about data uh, mm -hmm. we're not just talking about big companies now. We're talking about even smaller entities. Small businesses could use this concept of data um, research um, and development to drive businesses. Okay, so like for example, let's say you are a tailor, right? And you know most of your businesses is from weddings because you like to make suits and thing, right? But you're just sitting down on your laurel and you're waiting for people to come to make suits. Why you don't do some research and see when is the time in the year that most people doesn't make these suits for you? Where are my main clientele coming from? Right? Um, what type of suits are they really? make it, what is in style, right? What type of material is available so that I could offer my customers? So so in your research, you're going to the clothes stores, they talk to the clothes suppliers and you ask them, okay, you're going to, so the next six months, tell me what type of material um, you have available so that when people order this material, I don't have to worry about supplies. Bam, they get our information. So you have that on record now. You're going to you take it a step further and you're going out to, to, you're going out to all the different um, places that people register in to, to, to uh, where's probably when you register to get married, um, the marriage, please. I know it, but the marriage, wait, wait, please. Right? The, 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 yeah, the, yeah we have a name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ward no office. The ward no office, right? Right. Ward no office. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ward no office, but there are two. When you, when you, when it, it's bands, let's call it something bands. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Before uh, right, something right. bands, right? So you, you go, you, you get off your laurel, you go to these places and do some do some research. How many people register in? You understand where to go in to make the suits, get the information. So when you have the information, you, 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 how you're operating is from a data-driven approach. So which means that you're marketing yourself now as a tailor. You could market this type of suits one time in terms of the type of material, in terms of the type of style, because you already know, this is the style that cracking you know, right now, this is the style that everybody go, go with, this is the material that the, that the clothes source have available. These are the people that I am marketing my business to, and it's a data-driven approach to how you're doing things, right? But we don't operate so. We wait and we sit down, we wait for, for customers to come. And if yeah. 10 customers come, if two customers come, if one customer come, we bowl it. <laughs> right? So, mm -hmm. so it, it, and, and again, you have to understand that the information is there. We live, we live in an information um, age, and the information is it's not like before, where it would have been more difficult to access, but the information is there now. We have the CSO, we have um, a lot of the, again, the, 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 we have um, with, the digital, with the digital transformation, many of this information I'm speaking about, Shivani, is going to be available. So you can sit down when you come from your own Shivani as a business person and access this information, you know. 
Yep. You understand? You can access this information and do your own research to drive business, to drive sales, right? To create new, um, to create new business avenues, right? New markets, right? So that is that is, that is the whole crux of when we talk about fostering research and development um, in this post-pandemic period, using the information that we have, using the technology that we have right now to, to, to really drive sales and to drive our, our business yeah, interests, right? And another process that we have is promoting sustainable practices. Sustainable. Right? You know sustainable is a buzzword that they use all the time, mm -hmm. right? But um, it's more than just a buzzword. <laughs> it could be used as a way to, um, to leverage our, 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 in, in terms of persons' interest in keeping our, the, the environment um, free of, you know, Coming up with a new is also coming about with a new uh, a, a new business. If you're thinking about mm -hmm. um, sustainability, especially I see here you're talking about circular economy. It's just reminded me somebody called me up, wanted to have a discussion on circular economy. You know, he's in this mm -hmm. business for circular economy, so it, it's quite popular too. What you're saying, um, but mm -hmm. people just need to know, as we as you and I always talk about, Herman, you don't know what you don't know. And that's why they come, everybody, I'm hoping on the chat, people are coming to us because you don't know what you don't know. And when you see something, you're like, oh my, this is what I could do. So, you know, um, trash, what, there's a saying, but trash, you know, trash is um, um, is somebody else's, um, you could look at trash and make so much out of it. You know, people do this jewelry and and it's innovation, it's innovation. Huh? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um. For instance, you know the the air condition um, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, you know, in terms of how that particular industry is headed, they have a lot of sustainable practices going because, as you know, the um, at one time the refrigerants right would have been a problem with the ozone layer. So, in in, in many respects, and then you had the Kyoto, the, what, what they call the Kyoto Protocol, would have more or less forced that entire industry worldwide to make a lot of changes. So, we have now in twenty twenty three. The phasing out of a lot of the um the more dangerous refrigerant gases mm -hmm. and they're using more what you would call more sustainable um type gases. Then you have the the, 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 the equipment of itself. So you have inverter type um air conditions, and then you have um solar powered air condition units, right? Um so at one time these solar powered air condition units used to be very expensive. Now the crisis is coming down. So I'm saying that you know, taking a cue from the from that industry. So while the air conditioning industry had to be forced to make sustainable, to, 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 to encourage sustainable practices because of, you know, the ozone layer and so on, other industries don't have to be forced into it. They could make a step forward, you understand? So like, before you have now um, the popularity of hybrid vehicles, you know, that is a, that is a move which is, you know, into the sustainable space. Using vehicles that are more energy efficient and more and more friendly to the environment and these type of things. These are these are ways in which you know you could market now from a business perspective, market these products in such a way that you could you know encourage persons, especially persons who have a who, you know, who care about the environment and who think about you know in terms of the practices, the marketing these things. So if it is you're selling food, for example, you know you could you could use the sustainability um, edge. You know you have organic, you know you sell organic food, you use organic ingredients. So the, the so the Shivani restaurant. Right, mm -hmm. that's selling hummus. Instead hummus of, instead of mm -hmm. selling a set of um unhealthy food, Shivani. Hummus, could, hummus is good. <laughs> you can make an effort now to use more organic products in your, in right. your food, more organic ingredients. Um, buy, buy local because you know, buying local mm -hmm. is a is a is a is, a, is, a, is being sustainable, you know, you understand? Oh. Because more anytime you import food, right, you're using up um, you, 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 you have you're bringing it in by plane by aircraft. Right, aircraft using up um, fossil fuels, burning, you know, thing. then you have ships that are bringing this food. So you're utilizing um, fossil fuels again also. Anytime you buy local products and you use local resources, that by itself is a step in sustainability. And that is a way now, persons who have businesses, to promote their businesses, to show persons that, hey, you know what, we're thinking about sustainability, right? And um, this place, um, is it fresh store? Is it anybody place? Is a place in Woodbrook that says only organic food and thing. You know that place Press. I'm talking about. Um, Press start. I tried to promote any particular business. Huh? I think it's fresh. Start in um. Yeah, it's a place. I I know of one particular place in in Woodburg, does it? But I've got a, you know you find a lot of places like that kind of gaining momentum. Then you have mm -hmm. um 
Then you have this other place too. Um, going up, man. You know, they pick this. You pick or pick you. You you pick or something. You so, pick. You pick Chagramas. Yes. Chagramas. Yeah, also, yeah. you go there. You pick. You know, you know, local stuff and so. You know, there are a lot of businesses now getting on to getting into this concept of sustainability, using local products. And as time goes forward, now you'll find that more businesses will appreciate the the, the, the need to, to 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 promote more um sustainable practices in in terms of how they do business and how they function, right? Perfect, yes. Innovation tools and processes. Yes. Then you have collaboration and networking partnerships. But I know Shivan, I know you, you you this is one of your your points you like to speak about in terms of um co-working, um, you know, co-working spaces, collaboration, um, open um innovation and these type of things, right? Because innovation thrives, as they will say, through collaboration, networking and partnerships. You know, look go on any base. You know, like sometimes you have this image of a scientist, you're know, up in a room for about a year and you come up with some remarkable invention, right? In today's world, that is not how things get invented, right? It's all about collaboration, talking to different people, bringing different skill sets, right? Um, forming teams, forming clusters, doing research, talking to different people, experimentation, and you know, all these different things where, where you talk, because remember, it's in, in, in terms of um, brainstorming, ideation, is in the first instance, what they call the fuzzy front end of innovation. In that, mm -hmm. first, in, in that first phase, is a lot of ideas have to come to the fore in order for us to fine tune down to the real um, juicy idea that you're looking for. But you need persons to keep bringing ideas forward to be thinking about the, the problem, right? And design thinking, all these different things coming to the, come the play now in terms of tools and frameworks that are used in, in, to, to, to bring persons together and to collaborate and to really come up with, with, with solutions to some of our more complex problems. So in Trinidad and Tobago, for example, when we have a problem with crime and so on, that's a very complex problem. No one person, you know, like how we, have, we tend to think, hey, you know, the police commissioner is the person supposed to deal with the crime problem. That is just one part of the, of the puzzle, right? No, com no, no police commissioner is capable, especially with, with the situation we have right now in this country, is capable of solving this crime problem on the own. It's a complex problem. You need collaboration, you need partnerships, you need networking, right? And somehow, you know, that like that, that, that thought process is lost on the decision because we have to come together, all different parts of the of the of the society, whether it's government, opposition, this one, that one, all different stakeholders in the society have to come together to solve the problem, right? So this 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 concept on we rely on one person, we all the reliance is on the police commissioner. Everybody relying on the uh, minister, national security, they are they alone have all the ideas. No. Right? Everybody, complex problems. Everybody has to have to come together. So if it is that even from a company perspective, you're talking about in a company and you want to come up with um, with ideas to bring the company forward, the days of one person lock up in a room trying to come up with an idea, those days are what? Collaboration. Let's bring in other person. If it is that we don't have the idea in-house, let's bring in other people who may, who, who, you know, thinkers, creative people, designers. Let's have workshops. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's put out ways on how we could generate more and more ideas, right? Now, it may have one or two times, right? Um, that in house in our company, some persons, and especially if you have, if, like what we were talking about the last time, we have a culture, a culture, a culture of innovation. Culture. Mm -hmm. They would find that in every you now and then, we would have ideas coming up from persons in the company, right? So some, like um, I could use an example of of um, of Carib, Carib, yeah, product um, the shiny soil, that was an in-house innovation, mm -hmm. right? And the shiny soil is one of their most successful products, especially around Christmas time, right? So they would have they would have leveraged on a local flavor because you know locally we, we like soil, so soil generally was a homemade drink, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and at the time, they really want anybody taking that flavor and mass producing it at, the, at, at that level. Even today, um, well, yes, because today you can get sorry with fruit and some of the other thing. But prior to that, especially especially with the shandy flavor, because you know a shandy has alcohol, so the innovation really was taking the alcohol and um, and, and and blending it with the soil, right, and creating this shandy soil flavor that is unique. In the world, there's no other place in the world that produces shandy soil. 
Yes. Right? The other, I don't the know other, that. I, I don't know that. Get. I don't know that. Yeah. Huh? I, don't know that. I don't know that. I now knowing that. Mm -hmm. I never knew that before. I don't know. What is that? I said I never knew that before. I never knew that before. Yeah, right. So so you know, so so that is an example of, of, of innovation that was that was not in-house. Mm -hmm. But what we say no, in a very similar way, companies could utilize um in-house people as well as collaborate with other stakeholders to come up with the ideas like that, right? Where you could create products or create new services, right? That could take a company and bring it forward. Okay. But you know something that comes to my mind, Herman, as you as you're going down. Um you're saying that companies, it, it just, I'm just hearing a couple of people in my head saying this. They'll say, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to give my idea. Somebody will take my idea. They'll take my idea. You know, that's still a, a, a sort of environment that a lot of people have, you know. But be, before I um, I talk a little more about it, what, what are your thoughts on that? That, you know, some people may not want to do that within the organization. What do, what do you think? Yes. So what 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 we will end on today is continuous learning and adaptability, mm -hmm. because um, again we live in a world the age of information. So you know you 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 run a company, you're going to have an organization, but it's a large organization or a small organization. You have to continually train your, your employees, right? And, and continually adding information, continually um, learning, and continually adapting to the environment. Now, remember earlier I was saying, large companies find it difficult, especially with uh, adaptability, because they would have already found a business model, right? That would have um, more or less made the company successful. So mm -hmm. now when it's time to do, when it's time to adapt, it becomes very difficult. But we have too many examples of companies that fail to adapt, fail to, you know, do things differently, fail to be agile, and would have, mm -hmm. would have um, failed as a result. Right? You remember there was a there was a time, um Shabba, you when there were numerous um cell phone providers, right? In terms of posting so you used to manufacture cell phones. So you would have had Apple, you would have had Blackberry, you would have had Nokia, you would have had um oh gosh, who was it? I mean they, 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 a Motorola. There was a time when there were numerous phone providers, right? But because these different companies um on the onset of the iPhone and some of the technology that came with it, they weren't able to adapt because they were already, they just got stuck with that particular um, way of doing things and they fell out and they fell off. So now what we have today is you just basically have Apple and you have Samsung and they're the market leaders. They may have one or two others like um, Hawaii and you have Blue Phone and a few others, but um, primarily Samsung and Apple have the worldwide market share, just two phone companies. Back in the day, Shivani, remember, I don't know if somebody people in the audience um, <laughs> old enough to remember those days. <laughs> well, we asked you, why well, asked you, I remember where, you then, Herman. Herman, how many, you could assume I could remember there that? There were many. <laughs> I might not right. remember. There was too. a time when you had... <laughs> Right? But there was, oh, Sony Ericsson was the next one, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there was a time where you, you had at least about eight or nine different phones you could have, you could have chosen from, and each of them, each of them had equal footing, you know, and Right. Nokia was pretty popular in Trinidad, Nokia at one time, right? Yeah. And now you know, you know anyway, anybody talking about Nokia again, right? So adaptability is the thing. Adaptability, being adaptability. able to move the times, being able to continuously um, train your staff into new technologies, right? Innovation is an okay. ongoing process that requires a culture of continuous learning and adaptability. Businesses in Trinidad Tobago um, must invest in employees, train and development of foster innovation, mindsets and skills. Encouraging a growth mindset and promoting experimentation and risk taking can lead to big true ideas. Creating a supportive environment where employees feel empowered, right, to, con to, to contribute and share their innovative insights will be crucial for long term success. And that is and that is one of the key things, right, that we could end with in terms of understanding that hey, what, um, yes, you have because it doesn't make sense. We live in a world of technology where technology is advancing on almost a daily basis. And companies are not taking advantage of all the set of um, emerging technology we have around us. Because with all the emerging technologies, there would be there would be technologies that apply to each particular industry more than others. You understand? 
So if it is that you have a business, Shivani, and your business is Shivani's um, restaurant, there would be emerging technologies that are, that are applicable to the development of your business. It is up to you now as the person who is running that, 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 that business concern to train your employees, key, key employees in your company in terms of different skill sets. So they're supposed to be, if it is that you want to digitize the operations, you send them on a, on a course that will assist them in that regard. That's all. If it is that you want to, you want to set up an app, you need to have persons now in your company who, who know how to interface with the app. IT people who, could, who, who, who know how to um, fix bugs, fix problems, you understand? And then you have customer service person who know and who understand now how to deal with the issues that, that go into in terms of how to run programs like that, right? And it, and the same thing when apply to any other type of um, business, business concern that persons have, there is technology that will apply specifically to what it is you're doing. It's up to you now to find out what the technology is, how you could leverage on the technology, or you could train persons. Who are the persons training? Find all these things and invest in the training, right? And, and, and create a continuous learning and adaptability environment so that you can push your, your business forward. Very true, um, Herman. Very, very true. Innovation tools and processes. So I know you said this is the last slide. Um, I wanted uh, in our discussion, I wanted to just share with the audience um, an, a, a nice tool, another nice tool that we are discussing and, and we'll run it off in more series um, down the road. But as I pull it up, anybody got any questions, um, please feel free to type in the chat or if you want, just, you know, um, you can speak and tell us by the time I'm just pulling it up, right? My stuff, woman. The other stuff that we were discussing. Right. Somebody need, was going to say something? No, not hearing. Okay. You want to say something to me, Shivani? No, I think Maria is speaking, but I'm not hearing her. Hi. We're not oh, hearing you. Okay. Are you hearing her, Herman? No, I don't hear I not hear anybody. Okay, I'm not hearing, but you're hearing me, right? Right. So um if you're if you you can type in the chat if, if we're not hearing you. So what I wanted to just show us is something known as the Innovation Project Scorecard. Something that Herman and myself, this is what we are looking at a lot in different companies, different organizations. You know, we are presenting different tools where we can now show persons, you may, is this, is this, does this make sense to do? Does this make sense to do? Because yes, you may have an idea, as you know, Herman, but not all the time it is relevant to the organization as well, right? So this is what we refer to as an innovation project scorecard that looks at whatever you want to do in terms of strategic fit, opportunity, et cetera. So we just wanted to close with this aspect where as we move forward, we'll have a series of conversations again on discussions of how can a project that you want fit within your organization, you know, and that we can score it. So yes, are there any questions, anyone in the group? Uh, I'm seeing a number of names that we know from week to week that we have been always on our Lunch and Learn series. I think I saw Vindra in it, a name that I know well in, in the Lunch and Learn. Vindra, you have any questions? Feel free to, to, to ask. I'm seeing some other names. Yeah. No questions? Do not have any questions from the chat? Well, that means that we... We spoke a lot, Herman, and you give all the information. So definitely the, the program that we have upcoming um, training program is Innovative Project Management that is on for next week, Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday, correct, Herman, at 5.30 to 8.30. It's an online program that, and of course, mixed with a little design thinking in it where we come face to face at our location. Um, so it's a blended program. However, you can do it even if you don't come face to face, you can do it totally online. So Maria is saying, how do you get others to shift from traditional mindsets to innovative thinking? That's the question Maria had. 
how do you get others to shift from traditional mindsets now to innovative thinking? It's about culture. It's about um, sharing information with people. I think uh, you, you mentioned it in a slide too, Herman. It's about education, right? You have to educate people. What do you think? How, how would you answer this question before I give a Herman, yeah? Come on, yeah. Was it? Uh, uh, you, you asked me question, a question, didn't you? Yeah, sorry. How do you get others to shift? This is Maria's question. How do you get others to shift from traditional mindset to innovative thinking? That's a, a wonderful question. Oh, that's a question. How to mm -hmm. shift from traditional mindset to innovative thinking? Yeah, right, so I was telling you about culture and ideation and workshops and, you know, hyping up the thing too, yeah? Right, right, right. Well, you see, now, the thing about it is, right, we are already in the age where these things are happening, right? And it isn't difficult to really get persons on board. It's just, a, it's just a matter of really creating the environment for them to want to change, right? So if it is like this, this is a you work in a company, and you wish to um, create, when we were talking about that last week, would you, would you got a, a culture change, culture. right? Yeah. So you're creating a culture change within your, within your organization, whether it's a small organization or a large organization. Naturally, small organization would take a little longer because more employees are dealing with. So from the top, leaders have to encourage collaboration, encourage um, networking, encourage persons coming forward to give ideas, so you start off with little workshops, right? So you bring persons together and you create a nice environment where persons could talk and could chat about what are some of the ideas that they, that they have. So if it is that I say I'm working with in Shivani's company and you know somebody, uh, somebody cooks or somebody there and she's trying to create this innovative environment and this type of um, you know culture, what she will have to do is you know on a particular day, you know, she bring everybody together in the kitchen and she starts to talk and she starts to ask questions, hey. Um, you know, anybody ever thought about something different that we could do in the kitchen in terms of what we could, you know, a new, a new, a new, a new, a new order, a new, a new meal, or a new ingredient that we that we probably, you know, we could use and so on. And and somebody could put people know they have all kind of different cooking programs on on TV. People look at and you know they make up with ideas. But because the the environment wasn't created, nobody probably used to say anything. But now, Shivani, you know, you um. Create the environment. She has a person's talking on somebody will come up with an idea. She might do the first time, nobody might say anything. But then you do it a second time, you do it a third time, and eventually do somebody may come up. And, and so, so it's really to, it's really just to lay the um really wrong route for persons to come forward and feel comfortable in sharing ideas, right? Then now um with that, with, with that first um initiation, you, you create the environment, then never know, as I was talking before, is about continuous learning. So you also have now to, to kind of like train persons in the mindset of innovation. So you'd have to like maybe do our next type of workshop where you have to children and talking about creativity, encouraging creativity, right? Because all of us at some point in time would have been creative eh? when you were young, uh, but it was in primary school, you know, you'd have been thinking about doing different things, crazy ideas, whatever. We got we got a lot older and you know, the system tends to kind of sham. Um, style for creativity. So we're trying to bring that back out in Putin's with different training sessions, the different um, things that, that they encourage. You know, so we so I sometimes hey. I, I myself and Shivani we do design thinking workshops with different with different stakeholders and different companies and so on. It's a bring back out that that creativity, um, you know, that creativity that would have been laying dormant in persons all these years. You understand? Know, you're bringing it back out to them and you're giving them the opportunity you know, to think about to think about things differently and to, and, 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 and to do experimentation, to do brainstorming, you know? And, and that's where it starts. So it starts with, it starts with the creating environment. It starts with, with some sort of training and it's not something that is a one-off activity. It is something that has to happen on a regular basis. You have to sustain it over a period of time, right? Because you would have persons that, you know, hey, this company, they don't know anything, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't take no ideas. They, they, they. And you know, so persons may have that kind of mindset they may not come forward with anything. But then when you see the, 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 the whole mindset of the company changing and you see persons being more, you know, let me use that, you know, our next example, Chef, and I could, I could use with that. You see, remember in the days when people didn't used to um, wear safety, was like in the back of everybody's mind. Nobody right, 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 yeah. So, yeah. you know, you used to work in companies and you used to do mm. things anyhow, nobody taking on safety, very unsafe work practices. But then as time went on, right, and safety became a, a major mm. thing, you started to hire 
safety professionals in organizations decide to have laws, you know, they set up a, 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 a hush authority, then person, then companies now would, would have been getting uh, charged for when they do unsafe practices. And then, you know, so the entire environment um, changed over the years, and persons now have safety as a major part of what they do take. Well, but the innovation is going to be very much like that in time to come, right? If people may not get charged for not innovating, right? But definitely there will be consequences, bigger and larger consequences for companies in the future when they, when they decide or when they choose not to innovate, right? They're going to feel it just as how um, companies feel it um, in the bottom line when they do when they, when they, when they promote unsafe practices and, and they are taken to court in a very similar way, just like what we have talked about companies like Nokia and Blackberry who are no longer here with us. They pay the ultimate price for not innovating. So very similarly, companies will pay the ultimate price. And when they see other companies now falling on the wayside because they fail to innovate, they will have absolute, they will now have no choice but to take innovation seriously and to encourage it in the organization, create a culture of innovation, set up what we call IMS systems, which is systems that you have where on a continuous basis you innovate, start doing more innovation projects, and the future now will be ripe in terms of where this whole concept of innovation will be. Yes. So, Herman, you know, I honestly believe that um, things do change, are just like yourself, adaptability. And when people know something, they do it, right? Um, training and development, as you said, is what will make people become more innovative thinking. That, that, that is what it comes down to. You said something that, um, you know, your organization can start to talk and just get a little ideation session going and start to talk, right? To do innovative thinking as you and I are doing all the time, you, you would agree with me. You need to practice design thinking, right? Design thinking, it is a strategy that will help you to become more innovative. And one of the tools that we always use, and, and you know, you said it in, in, in a way there, how might we, how might we, how might we do something? That's the type of thinking, you know, you know, the culture is to blame and blame and say in the organization, we're not doing this, we're not doing this. But the whole culture, the environment, everything got to change. It could, it could really start with one person. It can start with one person in an organization. If you are within an organization, some of us may be working for somebody here or some of you might have your own company. So, you know, food for thought. And as we go through, you know, we'll talk so much more. And, and Ruth is asking us, um, Herman, and I'll answer, do you all do the innovation project scorecard for skincare brands? Of course, this particular design thinking and innovation strategy can be used right throughout. It's excellent to test it in all different areas. So yes, yes, we do it in all different areas from training and development to brand development, any particular area can do it. So yes, you just reach out to us and, and you know we can definitely um, contact you more for that. That's Ruth. So I know it's after lunch and I think persons might be returning to their jobs, you know, or returning to what they have to do. I wish to say, somebody's talking and we're not hearing them. They maybe wanted to ask something. I don't know who it is, but I hear a little noise. So if you want, type it in the chat. If you can't, or of course, send us the email. Um, thank you and I'll reach out. Okay, through to saying, um, she's going to reach out. Great session. Thank you, Ruth. So again, we are we are hoping that we are leaving with some more knowledge that we came in that we, from from the beginning of our launch to now, right? On innovation tools and processes, we can stay and talk about this for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. You know, Herman, you could especially if we drink in coffee, you and I, we could definitely talk hours upon hours, right? about it. Um, we look forward to next week, Wednesday, our training program, Innovative Project Management. Of course, register for it. It's all across our networks. Look out for it and you can also get into it. We do a lot more training, design thinking as Herman and myself. We will do more brand development, coaching. So reach out to us. You know, we are here. We want to change innovation. We want people to become more innovative. We want people to be more innovative. So reach out for us. We do a lot of coaching one-on-one. -on -one. You don't only have to have an organization, but you just want to be able to ideate. You want to be able to set up something. You can call us. This is all part of, of the suite of um, offerings that we do. So Herman, anything you want to close with? You're closing yeah. with your hands. Yes. So right. until next time, everybody, stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody. All the best. All Thanks right. again.
ठीक है 